Let's talk about your role as a parent in your child's math education. We all want the best for our kids, especially when it comes to math, because we know how important mathematical thinking is going to be for them as they go on to college and, and careers, especially in the 21st century. But unfortunately, what I see is there's two main issues that sort of get in the way of parents being able to help their kids at home. One of those is there are a lot of us who carry around a lot of math anxiety of our own from our own personal experience uh, with math education. And so if you bring this anxiety into the situation with your child, we do know from research that kids can pick up on these subconscious clues about their parents' anxiety and can actually negatively impact their achievement. So if you have some of that anxiety inside of you, that's perfectly okay, but just work on trying to hide that from your child. Don't tell them, you know, I'm not a math person, things like that. Really keep that to yourself and project a positive attitude and, and no fear. And then the second thing is, as parents, you know, we have expectations for our children. We want them to do well, and to a certain extent, how our children do is a reflection on us. And so we can bring some stress and tension to homework help time and things like that because of those expectations. And I think any of us who have worked with our kids in math, we've probably had these uh, events from time to time where you say things like, you know, we just went over this yesterday, why can't you get this? Or why don't you just listen to what I say because I know what I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about, why don't you just listen? Um, we, get really, we can get really frustrated kind of quick. It's important to remember that deep down, our kids really do want to please us and if they feel like we're judging them, it's going to shut down their ability to, to function and to do math well when we're present. So really let those expectations go as best you can. And my best advice here is think about how you would help this child if it was someone else's child. You would never say to someone else's child, why don't you just get this? We just worked on this yesterday. You would say, oh, you didn't get this? Let's work on this again. And you'd have a much softer voice and you'd be much nicer, try and project that onto your own child as if they were someone else's. You'll find that it makes you a lot more relaxed and it brings the tension level way down. It's important to remember that it's still not your job to be your child's math teacher, right? That's their teacher's job. Your role is to be a coach and a motivator. It's the same thing if you think about soccer or piano, we don't expect most parents to be able to teach their kids how to kick a ball or, or make a pass or, or play the piano. We expect you to be the motivator, right? We want the parent to be supportive and enthusiastic and help the child succeed, but not necessarily teach all the details. Same should be true for mathematics. So really, your first job is to keep your child's enthusiasm up, keep their confidence high, make sure that they're enjoying math, right? Second thing is, you want to balance the practice with the fun. Now, of course, we need to do extra practice at home oftentimes, but if your child only sees that math is a bunch of worksheets and repetitive exercises and all of that, they're going to lose interest. And in the long run, they may get the skills, but they're not going to pursue mathematics and they're not going to excel at mathematics because they don't enjoy it. We don't do things over the long term that we don't enjoy, at least at some level. Right? So what can you do? Well, you can play a lot of games. Any game that you play has a mathematical component to it. Take a game like Scrabble. Most people say it's a word game. I say it's a math game. How you place the letters, which ones you choose, what values they have, where you put them on double letter score and triple word score, that's math. That's mathematical thinking. So if you just play more games, you're going to be doing math with your kids naturally. You can do puzzles with them, brain teasers, They've been building things out of Legos and have mathematical conversations when you're building. Oh, we're using Legos. How many little dots are on the top of that Lego? If I had four of those, how many dots would there be in all of them? Right? You can integrate mathematical talk into all of these activities and you're doing it in a fun way that isn't so stressful and doesn't have anxiety and things like that attached to it like sometimes homework help time can. So, when you do have to practice, remember, be really, really patient. Be super non-judgmental. Don't admonish your kids when they make mistakes. Mistakes are part of the learning process. And 
We're going to use them actually to help us find misconceptions and fix them. So it's going to be really safe for our child to work inside of our household, do math, and struggle with it because struggle is part of learning. Right? And then the one other thing that you can do is you can give meaningful feedback. Now what do I mean by meaningful feedback? Well, it's easy to say when your child gets an answer right, great job, you know, you're really smart or whatever. But that's not really meaningful. It doesn't help them learn anything about themselves or learn what to do the next time. So what I mean by meaningful feedback is, let's suppose your child used a diagram to solve that problem. You could say, I really like how you drew this picture in this problem because it helped you figure out what was going on and solve it. So the next time your kid gets stuck, they'll remember that pictures are a good strategy to use to solve problems. So when you think about your role in your child's math education, it's again, thinking about being a coach and a support system, even though you don't necessarily teach them the math. And so if you focus on these things, build up their attitude first. Make sure your child is confident and has some enjoyment and appreciation for math. That's gonna go a long way. Then when you do practice, you know, balance that out with some play so that they're seeing math not just as this boring, repetitive thing, but as something that's enjoyable and fun. And then again, during that practice time, be really patient and non-judgmental. Think about as if you're helping someone else's child. It'll help you relax. And then lastly, when you give feedback, make sure that it's really specific and meaningful so your child learns those things that they can hang on to that are going to help them when they get stuck on future, more challenging problems. If you do those four things, you're going to be providing that support that your child needs to be successful in the long run.